A record holder of 19 victories with only two defeats, a 2008 Olympian, ladies and gentlemen from Heartland, Wisconsin, Funky Ben Askren! Stepping onto the scales, U.S. Olympian. Official weight, 191 pounds, 191 for Funky Ben Askren. And now his opponent, no stranger to the digital world. Of course, he's made his mark as a recording artist, appearances on film and television. He comes to us fighting out of Miami, Florida, a native of Ohio. His professional record, Two fights, two victories, both by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the digital superstar. Please welcome Jake, the problem child, Paul. <laughs> two fights, two victories, two by knockout as a professional. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds. The cruiserweight division, once again sanctioned by the Georgia State Athletic Commission. We'll be live along with a great card of boxing and all the entertainment your heart could ever wish for on pay-per-view. Stepping onto the scales, Jake Paul, the problem child. One ninety one point five, one ninety one and a half ah! to the undefeated digital superstar, the problem child, Jake Paul. Here they are face to face, our main event fighters, Funky Ben Askren, Jake Paul, the problem child, versus Funky Ben. Tomorrow night live on pay-per-view for Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia. Our main event. All right, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's turn the microphone back over to Mr. What did you take away one day away from your main event matchup against Jake Paul? What's going through your mind? What did you take away from the stare down? I thought, I thought Jake Paul's cheerleading squad was quite rude. We got legendary Michael Buffer up here, and these motherfuckers are interrupting him. That was terrible. Rude, guys. So what's your prediction for tomorrow night? How's it going down? Uh, seventh round TKO. All right, Funky Ben Askren, ladies and gentlemen, predicting a seventh round TKO. The undefeated Jake Paul. Jake, we are a day away from your main event matchup against Ben Askren. I'm gonna ask you the same thing. When you looked into his eyes, what did you see? Uh, I see a guy who's underestimating me. I see a guy who's taking this as a joke. I see a guy who said, I have to take a shit in the face off. Uh, this, is, this is the last 24 hours that we will all have to hear of Ben Askren. And uh, this, one, this one means a lot to me and this one's, this one's for Shadow. Well, you certainly are fighting with the heavy heart shadow being your bodyguard who passed away. And he mentioned, I believe you said that he predicted 228 of the first round. Are you sticking with that prediction that you're gonna finish off Ben Askren in that time? You know, we'll, we'll see, but uh, I, don't, I don't think he makes it out of two rounds. I mean, look at the guy. He's got a, he's got a beer belly, so I clearly didn't take training camp seriously. And uh, hey, look, we all did the talking, we did the entertainment shit. But now it's time to let the fist fly. Well, you're all about entertainment. I've never seen, I, I've done a lot of weigh-ins, I've never seen a robot as a mascot for a prize fighter. Where did that come from? Look, NFL teams have mascots, NBA teams have mascots. Why don't boxers? I've said I'm the FOB, and I, I'm, I'm gonna show that tomorrow night. Jake Paul, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I can't think of anything that I'd rather be doing right now than getting it in with some boxing and my people out there who are watching and tuning in, see what's going on in the fight game. And of course, you know, Jake Paul and Ben Askren are the headlining fight this weekend. And we got a lot to unpack, but man, at the press conference, 
did my man George Ferocious Cambosis and <laughs> Lopez, Tiafimo Lopez that is, have a few harsh words for each other, man, and that fight will not need to be sold. It will be one of the most epic battles this year because you got two lion hearts, true bloodline, lions, and you don't have to unpack much when it comes down to these guys. They don't want it with each other outside the ring. They want it with each other inside the ring. So we're gonna show you a little bit of that. Without any further ado, it's time to box on a fight show. The table come fight night. I've been in the big leagues. I've been in the guys that, that have the experience, the amount of work. But this, at the end of the day, I don't overlook nobody that I face. You know what I mean? Whether he wants to stay defensive coach, I've been, <laughs> you know what I mean? All that we could push to the side. Me and my father, dynamic duo. About 20 years in the game together. You know, and I'm 23. So me and him, we got, we got everything. We don't need nobody else. We only bring others just because, you know what? At the end of the day, coach needs it too. He needs help. He needs help with, with my power. It's too strong. But at the end of the day, look, I'm only getting better. The Lomachenko fight helped me. It helped me a lot. Now I have more things that I could put into my arsenal, into my style, that this guy's not even going to see. And he's not even going to know what hit him. And I'm going to tell you that straight up. You talk about me being chinny, you don't even know what's coming. You say I got to worry about a right hand, you got to worry about all hands coming at you at you, all you times. Think, you think it's just the right hand. I'm telling that's, you, that's dude, your downfall. It's, it's a whole that's bunch of things. That's your downfall. My guy, I could do it. Bring I could break whatever. it down right now. Hey, and and you lucky you're not you fighting. You you like, I could fight tomorrow. We'll you're lucky, right right you you lucky we're not oh, fighting hey, today. Wait, wait, in reality, I'll put you yeah. in a fucking stretcher. Yeah, you wouldn't even make white. You wouldn't even make white, boy. Look at you. Oh, hey, got yeah. gentlemen, gentlemen, listen, like, listen, yeah. listen. Come on, man. I can't make sure. You got. You guys can fight June fifth. June fifth. June fifth, gentlemen. Get it off. Let's let's keep. No, no, no. Hey, come on, 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 come on. Do it right. Do June fifth. You can get it June fifth. June 5th, yeah. you don't get paid to fight boy. now, hey, you get paid to fight June 5th. I'm gonna tell you something, my you, man. You, 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 you fight are gonna be a fucking boy. example of why I'm gonna put everybody on their ass. Yeah, you and you know what, I'm gonna put my boy. foot up your neck, I'm my dude. Your, I'm taking all your belts. All right, you all ain't your shit. Belts. Yo, you should be thanking yeah, me, my guy. Bar. You should be thanking me. You should be thanking right. me. You should be thanking me. Jerry, Jerry, what did you do with questions? And that right there, hold on. Hey, got Why got these far for you, boy? Hey I got to hold him back. Hold him back. We have questions from the media. I ain't gonna touch you. We have questions. Can we have a seat, guys? The media from around the world wants to talk to you. I ain't gonna touch you. What you gonna do, my man? All right, June fifth. June fifth. Hey, hey, Teofimo. Thank you. Let's sit down. The media has questions to ask. It's obvious you're both in impeccable shape, but you guys don't get you don't get paid to fight right now. Look, I tell you like this, man. That's when you get paid to fight. Tell you like this, my man. Just be there. June 5th, right. and I'll you do the rest. You missed the flight yesterday, boys. I'll so do the rest. You be there. I'll, I'll do the, the rest. The flight the flight. Uh, I'll do yeah. the rest. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. All well, it's Alfima Lopez, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. George Cambosis, undefeated from Australia. This is for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world. Teofimo Lopez, George Cambosis. June 5th. Teofimo Lopez, George Cambosis, Triller Fight Club pay-per-view. The undisputed lightweight championship of the world is on the line. Face it out, guys. Face out for the cameras. Face out, gentlemen. All right. Face out, guys. Teo, you want to grab the, the championships? You want to grab the championships, George? All right. Let, let's face out for the cameras. There we go, guys. Teofimo Lopez, George Cambosis, Triller Fight Club pay-per-view. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Teal Fima Lopez. This little segment from the weekend that Cambosis and Teal Fima Lopez finally got an opportunity to face off. And as you can see, it was nothing but fire. And those two guys truly are lions. They want to get it in. And I think without any further ado, when you see these kind of guys, you don't have to force the fight or push the fight or instigate. They just don't like each other when it comes down to one trying to take the other spot. So what you're gonna see is two guys the same way that you saw Hearns versus Hagler. They're not coming to fight. They're coming to prove a point. And being on the show a little while back, George Cambosis made it very clear that 
he wants those belts. He's not talking that talk. There are a lot of those guys that talk that talk. Some of you got an opportunity to see us chop it up with George Cambosis when he was on the fight show. But there's something about the fiber in that young man that when you see him, you see a true lion heart, a true elite athlete with the pedigree to be at the pinnacle of sports. So when you see that kind of fiber and DNA, you know it when you see it. It's the real deal, but I, I love the fiber in which he's cut from. He had the same attitude that Lopez had when he went into the fight, Lomachenko. He had no doubt in his mind, and he had his dad, a solid team, and the same thing for George Cambosis. He's surrounded by good guys. He's taking himself out of his atmosphere in Aussie, and he's going to Miami down here, and he's getting his training what's necessary because it doesn't matter what you know. Until you're training at a championship level with true championship um, killers inside of your camp, it's irrelevant what you're doing. And when it's all said and done, it takes a true, true training camp. Well, a lot of guy, a lot of the guys that are in the sport, you know, they're in training camp beating up guys that they're supposed to beat up. But when you start to do elite level training camps, when you go off to the mountains for eight weeks, ten weeks, yeah, that's different level, man. You're fighting a bunch of, uh, you're you're in a room full of barracudas, and if you don't know how to swim, you will get drowned. And uh, I know that when he's coming to Miami, down South Florida, man, the heat is here. So I want you to keep in mind that that is one of the necessary evils that's going on. Because if he was just over in Aussie, it'd be much more difficult to make what he's making happen, happen. So I had to jump on that fight. And here's a clip from the show that we had. And he spoke specifically, and he spoke from his heart. And like I said, I can identify a fake one when I see one. He's a real one. Let's take a listen. Uh, one of the signs of Spartans, we say, I mean, you go into battle with your shield or on your shield, you come back on your shield. So it means you go in there, yeah. if you lose or you get killed, I mean, you're going to be taken with your shield. You don't drop your shield in the battle. You don't yeah. run off. You don't retreat. Yeah. Um, and it, it's such an important thing where you're in the, the heat of battle, you know, round nine, 10, you're getting through them, them hard rounds. Mm -hmm. That's where you say, okay, I'm a warrior here. I'm, I'm here to fight. If this yeah. man's going to take me out, we'll, we'll take me out. But uh, I'll be here with my shield and sword and I throughout the whole fight. So that was a good, um, I'm glad you asked that question, Otis. That was good stuff. So what we're going to do now is ask you what's next for George Ferocious Cambosis. What's next on your menu? Well, look, like I said, negotiations have already started between uh, my team my managers, um, and obviously Bob Arum, mm -hmm. Tiffany Lopez's team. So that's the fight. That's the fight I want. I really want that fight. Styles make fights. I'm his mandatory. I'm the only mandatory challenger uh, throughout the lightweight board. Obviously, Lee Selby was the number one in the WBO as well. So really, I should be the IBF, which I am number one, and I should be the WBO um, number one. So I pretty much got him in a corner. Um, and I just I just hope uh, you know he accepts the fight. I know he's a, he's a solid fighter. Um, yeah. But this is a great, this is an absolutely great, uh, great okay. fight for for the fans, and I truly believe I have the full belief, self belief in myself that I'll win this fight and take all his belts. Yes, <laughs> sort of like the same thing he said to Lomachenko. <laughs> yeah, well, look, it's it, it's it's yeah. a crazy it's a crazy thing because he had so much belief in himself against Lomachenko, yeah. and now the, the script is flipped. Now he's on the back end of obviously he's the man now. Yeah, so you got to worry when you're at the top. You're not looking at who's obviously in front of you. You, look, you gotta be worried who's coming up from behind you. And uh, well, I'm right I'm right on him now. I'm chasing him and, yeah. and no other lightweights is calling him out. Everyone's yeah. saying, oh, maybe in a couple of years, oh, I'm the A side. Look, yeah. you can be the A side, no problem. I don't care about any of that. Well, I just wanna fight you. And you, man, you guys, you're doing a great job. You know, you're giving that, that outlet to yeah. fighters like myself to yeah. showcase a different side. You know, so mm -hmm. many people just see that side in the ring, but um, you guys are showcasing a different side where we can talk and you know, not just purely about what I'm going to do to this guy, what I'm going to do to that guy, but a whole different look. And it's been absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, and that's my point. This dude's the real deal. Now I'm going to hop on this fight with Ben Askren and Jake Paul real quick. 
This is a special edition show. So we're on the beat, on the road, getting it in. But remember, Buddy McGirt will be in the building, one of the greatest to ever do it, and take his professional fight career and become an elite level world championship trainer. That's a very, very big hurdle to accomplish, but we will love to have the legend in the house on Thursday, so make sure you keep it locked. Now, as we look at this fight with Ben Askren and Jake Paul, I want you guys to let me know in the comment box who you got, who you think will win. But what I saw today, it let me know several things. Being an elite level athlete like Ben Askren is Olympian, a true killer in the ring. Uh, he's not known for his uh, striking ability. And when that, to me, that says a lot can happen in this thing. But anything after the fourth and fifth round, it starts to change the complexity. Cause I don't care who's training you. You can't get new DNA. It takes years to develop your body to become a eight round fighter, six to eight round fighter. It's an, it's an entirely different beast. So let me know what you guys are thinking. I hope you take the time and really unpack what it is that's going into that fight. Because Ben Askren really doesn't have a superstar kind of body. Uh, he's usually usually in the, the field of, he masters the science of grappling, bringing his opponents down. You can't do that in boxing. Uh, you just can't learn boxing. I know he spent a, you know, a, a, a day or so with Jeff Mayweather. If that's as serious as you're taking it, you're not gonna win this fight. Jeff Mayweather, Robert Garcia, Virgil Hunter, it's no body that can give you advice in one day to transfer into a boxing ring unless you're fighting a guy who hadn't been in the boxing ring either so let's see what this fight uh, like i said it's just so much to unpack man continue to follow us for those of you on youtube subscribe if you like boxing we teach it we share it and we talk it so until next time be blessed at god's speed drop your comments who will win this fight because we will definitely cover the fight post-fight. It's going down. Until next time, special shouts out to my brothers in the School of Boxing. I know who I'm picking. Make sure you check the post. I'm going to drop it in the comment box it's on YouTube and on Facebook. Until next time, we out. Eric A. Bradley, the real fight doctor. Peace. And remember, we will be airing more of the George Cambosis interview. And it was a great conversation with the young man. We'll get to learn a little bit more about him. You will get to learn a lot more about him. So until next time, continue blessings, man. We're out.